so today we are going to see that how to work in carpentry shop and a few important details about the carpentry shop so these are the contents that we are going to discuss in this series that what is carpentry then pattern making to create mold in foundries wood and timber and their classification seasoning of wood this part we are going to cover today <clears throat> and in the next video we are going to see the carpentry tools and the safety used in the carpentry shop now first what is carpentry carpentry is a process of shaping timber okay shaping or joining timbers and finally giving some shape for some purpose we'll also discuss the different kinds of application of carpentry but the ultimately the carpentry is a process of shaping timber next the products are used in building construction furniture making patterns to create mold in foundries these are very very important applications of carpentry and you also know that uh, we can make many decorative items also made of timber and the basic materials used in carpentry shop are timber and plywood and definitely some auxiliary materials like nails screws adhesives paints varnishes are also required so these are the three points that you have to remember regarding the carpentry now let us see that one of the specific application of carpentry is that pattern making and you know that pattern is a very important thing that is required to create the mold in foundries so let us see this video and try to understand that how to create a mold so that you can get a visual feel that how this pattern helps to create the mold and you know that uh, the mold is basically an impression on the sand and in that mold when you put the liquid metal after solidification it will uh, the casting actually finally the cast product is prepared so let us see how it is done first of all on a clean floor we will set the inverted drag box then we will place the pattern inside the box and pour the sand into the box after that sand is rammed and leveled off The packed drag box is then turned over and coke box is placed over it. After that, second half of the pattern is placed exactly over the first half of pattern. Then the sand is filled and rammed tightly. Now two boxes are opened and pattern is removed with the help of screws. Boxes are again put back into position and clamped with the rivets to prevent upper box floating. Gates and spruces are formed to pour the metal. Now the molten metal is poured into the mold. Then it is allowed to cool down for some time. After cooling, the final cast is taken out. So I hope you have understood that how pattern helps in creating mold and finally the cast product is prepared. A very uh, commonly used two terms, sometimes very confusing. Uh, what is the difference between the wood and the timber? See, the term wood is used to refer to the substance that makes up the tree. It is the hard fibrous structural tissue that is commonly found in stems and the roots of trees so wood is basically those tissues which are fibrous hard and structural tissues that is there in the stem or in the roots that is basically the wood but after wood is cut uh, that means after the tree is cut then uh, we give shape to that trees uh, uh, those uh, stem portion into rectangular pieces or further different shapes and all that all these after processes after it cutting off is called timber so the term timber is used to refer to the wood at any stage after the tree has been felled so that you have to remember when it is the tree 
at that time basically the tissue of the structural fibers that is present which is basically the wood and when the tree is cut and after that at any stage maybe uh, initially that stage is the raw uh, stage where it is the raw timber and after that many kinds of processing done on that timber maybe seasoning and after that different kind of cutting uh, so that uh, different kinds of processes are done so that the different kind of structural uh, materials can be done with the help of uh, that timber so those after processing whatever you are doing remember those are the different kinds of timber okay so what are the different types of timber uh, different types of timber uh, can be depending upon their shape you see that initially after the uh, uh, trunk is cut you see that this kind of uh, shapes uh, that you are getting which are called the log and after that you see the bulk and the bulk you see they are almost the square section okay uh, these are called the bulk plank you see the cross section of the uh, they are basically length is quite higher with respect to the width okay so they are called the plank wooden plank or the timber plank we call and the board uh, in case of board, basically the length is uh, very, very large with respect to the thickness. So thickness are generally less than 50 millimeter, whereas the uh, this width is uh, more than 125 millimeter. Then we call it a board. Okay. So anyway, so these are certain uh, commonly used shapes uh, that I have shown here. Other than that, there are also many different types of cross section, and based on that, different types of timbers are also there. But these are very common. Now coming to the classification of the wood. Okay, so wood can be classified mainly as a hard wood and the soft wood. Now, if you see the uh, this particular annular rings, if you see the cross section of the trunk, you will find this kind of annular rings within that, and it is possible to calculate the uh, age of the tree by counting the. Uh, annular rings because every year a new annular ring actually added up so in this way if you can count properly it is possible to find out the age of the tree anyway so first of all uh, a few things you have to understand in this annular rings you see the outside the black part that you can see this is basically called the bark and you see there are two types of rings the inner rings are there and the outer side rings in the left hand side picture uh, in this case you see the inner rings uh, which are shown by the brown colors uh, those are inner rings which are called the heartwood okay these are called this is the name heartwood okay it is not hardwood okay this is heartwood hardwood means these are nothing but the inner those are inner rings inner layer of rings these are called hardwoods and outside these rings which are uh, outside layers these rings uh, these rings are called the sapwood sapwood these are just name you just uh, we can refer in this way that the inner layers uh, inner rings and outer rings okay these are important because uh, based on that these observations uh, we actually differentiate hardwood and softwood that is why the names are important now what are the differences you see that some of the differences has been identified here so first of all uh, the softwood has less hardwood hardwood means less inner layers hardwood means the inner layers the number of inner layers present which are less here you if you see that approximately one two three four uh, number of inner layers are there whereas here you see that the dense uh, inner layers are there okay so uh, in case of soft wood uh, less number of hard wood is present whereas uh, the hard wood covers a large area where you can see uh, the large dense hard wood are actually there then uh, sap wood area is smaller sap wood area that means the outer layers part okay outer layer parts so that part is smaller whereas the uh, sap wood area is larger okay so this outer layer part that is larger and how can you 
distinguish between the inner layers and the outer layer that means the hardwood and the uh, sapwood they are actually distinguished by their color you can see that there is a color difference between uh, the inner layers and the outer layers always you will find this kind of a color difference but in case of a softwood generally uh, this color difference is not very prominent in case of softwood but in case of hardwood this is generally very prominent okay so sapwood area is smaller and sapwood area is larger these two we have identified and dark in color and light in color that means the uh, cross section if you see the cross section the inner layers or the outer layers you will find those are very dark colors the annular uh, rings are very dark in color whereas the annular rings are light in color in case of softwood and growth rings are close and growth rings are uh, further apart that you can understand that growth rings means these annular rings they are densely packed in case of hardwood in case of softwood they are uh, not densely packed the distance between them is larger so hard to drill and easy to drill uh, they are uh, generally uh, soft. Most of the cases, they are generally soft. And generally, the hardwoods are hard. But it is not that all the times that hardwood will be very hard and the softwood will be very soft. Okay, Generally, uh, it happens. But uh, these hardwoods are more expensive. The hardwoods are more expensive, whereas the softwood are less expensive and poor fire resistance in case of a hardwood so whereas the better fire resistance in case of a softwood so depending upon these properties uh, you can select their applications suppose you want to make a structure where uh, huge stresses are going to come on that wooden structure so which one will be preferable whether it is the hardwood or a softwood if the uh, pressure is coming huge or the stresses which is coming on the uh, wooden structure is very high. In that case, definitely the hardwood is preferable. Softwood is not preferable. Okay. On the other hand, uh, softwood is uh, preferable uh, in many applications. Suppose uh, if you want to make uh, a sculpture or a decorative item, okay, where you know that the uh, that particular wooden structure is not going to take huge amount of stress or maybe uh, light work uh, mold preparation so for pattern making initially you know that the uh, huge amount of ramming is not going to take place there okay uh, but if the situation is that that there will be a huge amount of ramming so the pressure will be very high on that pattern in that case even the soft wood is not preferable but if the situation is that it is a very light casting maybe uh, in that case soft wood is preferable because you know that uh, for cutting the material when you are shaping the pattern in the carpentry shop if you use the hardwood the, definitely the effort that is required is more in case of soft wood uh, generally the effort required is less okay so these are certain pros and cons depending upon the applications they are selected for making furnitures and other things, definitely you have to choose hardwood. Softwood is not suitable. Okay. But suppose you want to make a, a match stick and that particular stick definitely will be made of some softwood. Okay. Generally for the woodworking purposes, for the woodworking, I mean to say for the structural purposes where the stresses are going to come, generally the hardwood is preferred. All the time hardwood is preferred. Because softwood generally cannot take uh, load across the fibers. Okay. So, uh, softwood can only take pressure along the uh, fibers. Okay. They can take that stress. But across the fiber, they cannot take that stress. But in case of hardwood, it is almost equally take the stresses both along the fibers and across the fibers. So, when uh, this kind of chances of bending on that particular uh, member, uh, which is made of maybe timber, uh, in that case, is definitely the hardwood will be preferable. Okay. Now coming to the seasoning of wood. Okay. So this is uh, very important. Uh, seasoning 
is the process of drying timber to remove moisture content of the wood cells okay because in the uh, raw condition a uh, lot of moisture is present within the wooden cells okay so the seasoning is the process by which we can remove the moisture from the wooden cells and moisture content should be below 15% in the seasoned timber so this is a general guideline uh, that uh, if it is a properly seasoned uh, wood then uh, its moisture content should be below 50 15% and another thing is that uniform rate of moisture removal can prevent damage of the wood and that is also important if you want to remove the moisture this is what is the ultimate objective of whatever there are different kinds of seasoning right there are different ways by which you can uh, remove the moisture the ultimate objective we have to remove the moisture but you have to remember the procedure of removing the moisture uh, should be such that the moisture removal rate is uniform throughout the wood throughout the surface the moisture removal rate should be same if it is not if the moisture removal rate is not very smooth then there is a possibility of different kinds of damage that may occurs in the seasoned wood okay so it is also very important to uh, control the seasoning parameters so that the moisture uh, removal rate is uniform and here you can see in the picture the bottom one you see that there are different kinds of uh, damage that can takes place uh, because of the non uniform uh, removal of the moisture from the uh, wood okay so it can be bow it can be crook cup or twist and you can understand that uh, what are the different kinds of shape it will take because of the damage in the, actually the uh, when the moistures are coming out uh, in a non-uniform rate, uh, it is possible that the different wooden cells will change their sh uh, shape in such a way that ultimately the effect will come in the gross uh, timber or, or the gross material. So, uh, seasoning uh, you have understood is a process of drying the timber. Okay, and in the picture of what you can see, it is basically the uh, air seasoning process. I will explain in the next slide let's see okay but before that uh, let us see that why seasoning is done this is very important why seasoning is done because uh, if seasoning is not done and that particular uh, timber is directly used without seasoning uh, in that case there is a chance uh, of crack or shrinkage or wrapping different kinds of uh, things can happen but if you season it properly then definitely it reduces the chances of formation this kind of uh, cracks shrinkage or wrapping definitely if you season it uh, the weight of the timber decreases so that is definitely uh, helpful and decrease the electrical conductivity you know that moisture or water is a good conductor of electricity so if you can remove the moisture from the wood in that case the electrical conductivity will decrease because you know that in different uh, applications the um, uh, timbers are used to uh, used as insulated right so if it is uh, not properly seasoned then it uh, remember it is not uh, uh, completely insulated uh, some amount of conductivity will be present uh, because some moisture is there so seasoning helps to decrease the electrical conductivity less attack of fungus insects and termites uh, it is not that in a season root that termites are not going to attack but uh, definitely the chances will less uh, because the moisture is not present within the timber paints and varnish retains for a longer time and definitely if you season it it becomes stronger okay uh, the wood becomes stronger in terms of strength it becomes high so these are the few points you just try to remember that why we do seasoning now there are different types of seasoning that i have just told that seasoning can be natural seasoning or it can be artificial seasoning these are two broad classification it can be natural or artificial seasoning again natural seasoning can be water seasoning or air seasoning and artificial seasoning can be of different kinds like 
seasoning by boiling by chemical seasoning by kiln seasoning and the electrical seasoning let us see uh, all these things one by one so first of all this one uh, is what is called the air seasoning just try to uh, observe the picture uh, what is there here you see that uh, the timbers which are placed layer by layer but uh, in between any two layers there are battens these uh, battens are basically some again some uh, kind of a shape of wooden things why they are placed so that there is a gap between uh, two layers of timbers okay again you see that the timbers are not started from the ground so initially some height is there and uh, alternate layer these battens are there so that uh, there is a gap between any two layers so in this way they are stacked they are stacked and huge space is generally required for this kind of seasoning huge space is required and uh, in this way they are structured i hope you have understood and what is the approximate gap and all that you can see and it takes around 3 to 4 months these are simply live in open space nothing else you need not to monitor anything okay this is a natural seasoning process only create this kind of a structure eh? and you just uh, keep it there then what will happen that air is going to flow here you see that the air is going to flow and and through this air that actually the moisture Uh, uh from the wood uh, or this uh, timber will be absorbed within the air and gradually it loses the moisture so this is what is the simple air seasoning okay now you see that the, the time is definitely long 3 to 4 months it takes now it is the water seasoning you see that in case of water seasoning what is done uh it is basically these uh you can see that uh those logs are actually uh, uh placed in the water body definitely you can understand the huge amount of water body will be covered with this kind of things and uh, what will happen actually uh the seasoning means you know that removing of water from the uh, timber but here it might be confusing that if our objective is to remove water from the timber then why we are keeping it under water and how it will remove the uh, water from the timber see what is actually happening that within this uh, wood cells actually what happens there are a lot of uh, highly dense sap present within that okay highly dense sap means they are kind of gluey things okay so it is not only the water actually the high density uh, sap which is present and this sap is a liquid but very highly dense uh, liquid and it is very important to remove that sap from the uh, wood from the wood cells actually from the wood cells it is required to remove this sap uh, first if the sap is not removed then what happened the it is very difficult or it will take a very long time to remove the moisture from the wooden cells so once the sap is moved uh, if somehow you can remove the sap easily and after that if you keep it in air uh, very quickly it will remove the moisture so uh, in this water seasoning what is actually done it is kept under water and when water flows uh there is a density difference between the sap and the water okay so in the wooden cells the sap is there which is a high density in the water so what is what is going to happen that high density sap will gradually diffuse into the water so this in this way basically the wood is going to lose the sap within it that uh, thick Uh, fluid which is present within the wooden cells so that sap will be removed and once the sap will be removed from the wood and after that within a very short period of time if you just simply keep it uh, it will simply uh, the moisture is simply gone out okay so very quickly uh, it is possible to remove moisture uh, from the uh, timbers 
uh, that you have to remember and this is what is the water seasoning okay now let us see the advantages of natural seasoning what are the advantages definitely they are less costly because no monitoring or no skill is required skill labor is not required okay extra arrangement extra power requirement these are not there and that, that is very very economical okay stronger quality the quality is very good the output quality is stronger output quality is stronger uh, quality uh, not the overall quality of the timber but the uh, strength wise uh, they become stronger by the natural seasoning okay maybe because of natural seasoning the uniform Mitty might lose that means the moisture removal rate might not be so uniform that can be controlled in case of artificial seasoning uh, that is why maybe in case of artificial seasoning the chances of crack and other quality as a whole the quality of the timber might be good but in terms of strength you remember the natural seasoning gives the better strength that you just remember used for uh, big size wood generally a large size big size woods these are uh, used and no skill as such no uh, separate skill is required for this kind of seasoning because you just kept it uh, underwater uh, well, float it under uh, in the water or you just uh, keep it uh, by making the stack that's all what are the disadvantages of natural seasoning uh, definitely the more space is required that means once you create that stack unless the complete thing uh, will be seasoned uh, so you have to wait for three four months then only you can create another stack okay so uh, more space is required more time consuming uh, you can understand difficult to control parameters because uh, you do not have much control because you are not controlling anything everything is occurring it depends on the season rather uh, depends on the climate and if uh, in which country you are there in the uh, where you are doing the seasoning process it depends on many factors so it is not on uh, not, not in your hand actually that uh, the three to four months in air seasoning might be in one place, but maybe in some other place it may take six months or more than that, depending upon the uh, climate. Maybe in some climate it will not possible at all uh, natural seasoning. So uh, these are the disadvantages because you do not have any control parameter. It depends on the uh, natural environment. Chances of end crack is there because uh, uh, you can see that uh, some end cracks uh, in this diagram, you see these are the end cracks uh, that is there. And that is possible because of the high removal rate of water from these ends. Okay, that is why the, uh, the crack is generated, and that is why sometimes what is done, uh, some chemical treatment is done during seasoning so that the we can reduce the uh, high removal of water rate through the ends so that these kind of cracks do not form. So in natural seasoning also sometimes some chemical uh, treatment is done uh, to avoid this kind of thing. But definitely there are chances of end cracking because of the non-uniformity uh, of the moisture removal rate. Quality is not as good as artificial one. As a whole the quality I am telling. But definitely the strength wise on the quality is higher uh, in case of natural seasoning. Yeah. now coming to some of the artificial seasoning uh, that is the boiling so here you can see that uh, boil uh, basically the what uh, within the uh, boiling water uh, these uh, timbers are placed and you can see the sap a uh, wooden sap actually removed into this hot water because it is a diffusion process by which the sap is coming from the wooden cells to the water and that diffusion uh, increases if you increase the temperature so here uh, definitely you require some power to generate heat to make this boiling water definitely uh, but uh, definitely this process is very fast you can see that in this way you can do it uh, within two to five hours and you know that if the sap is removed very quickly the seasoning can be done Next, you see the chemical seasoning. So here you see that the large chamber is there. And within that chamber, uh, the timbers are uh, stacked in this way. And uh, would initially seasoned with carbon dioxide, ammonium carbonate, 
urea or suitable salt in dry form to dry in and out quality. That means uh, you know that there are some uh, chemicals, uh, those chemicals actually absorb uh, moisture, absorb water, right? So uh, through this chemical uh, action, basically the moisture is removed from the uh, timbers. Okay, so this is what is the chemi chemical seasoning and you can see the time requires around 30 to 40 days. Now coming to the electrical seasoning, in case of electrical seasoning that uh, you see that initially there are a lot of moisture present. That is why you are doing seasoning to remove the moisture. So what is done? Uh, the electrical chamber, you can see this is what is the electrical chamber. And within that electrical chamber, definitely the electrodes are also there. So one end is positive, another end is negative. And this wooden stack or the timber stack is present within uh, these two electrodes. And then what happens? The current is flowing. And within that current flowing path, this uh, timber stack is there. So uh, since the moisture is present, that is why the circuit is completed. And uh, when the current is flowing, because of the resistance faced within the uh, timber stack, definitely the heat is generated. And you see that it is the high frequency AC current is supplied through the wood. So that actually heat up and remove the moisture from the wood. And as soon as the moisture will remove, definitely the uh, electrical conductivity also decreases. And this is the process by which finally it will lose most of the uh, water. And these processes are very well controlled. And since the electrical process, it's a quite uniform way, uh, the moisture is actually removed. But definitely there are some uh, negative points like high initial cost but on the other hand it's a uniform drying uh, that is achieved through this method this is the kin method here you can see that uh, this is a chamber kind of a thing uh, within which you can see the whole stack exactly like the air seasoning uh, stacking you have observed initially the batons are there and the planks are there okay and but it is uh, staying over a, a trolley kind of a thing uh, these green things indicates the wheels so those are inserted within that particular chamber outside you see the refractory walls are actually there and then with the help of uh, hot pipe basically uh, the air inside it is heated okay so air inside is heated and that hot air actually uh, what happens remove the moisture very quickly okay so it does not require those three to four months in the normal air seasoning now since uh, the heat exchange device we are using the hot pipe uh, to heat the air inside and this is the process by which basically the inside air is heated and that will helps to quickly uh, remove the moisture from these timbers and maybe sometimes it is possible that the moisture removal rate becomes very very high so that is also not uh, um, suitable because in that case there is a chance of cracking uh, may take place if the removal rate becomes very very high if you are drying it at a very high rate and that is why sometimes it is also required that some of the moisture so some moisture level you have to control within that environment so that is why some steam jets facilities are also there to maintain the moisture level, temperature. So everything is in your control within that chamber, okay, by which you can control a particular environment. Uh, at that environment, the uh, maybe the uniform way the heat uh, moisture removal will take place. And at the same time, yeah, that those parameters are in your control. And finally, those moist air uh, is passed uh, actually taken out uh, through this uh, there is a um, there is a uh, something uh, suction kind of a thing through which that moist air is taken out uh, from that region from that chamber to the outside okay so this is what is the uh, process which is done in the uh, keen artificial seasoning okay again there are different kinds of uh, keen like progressive compartmental we need not to know all these things but uh, generally, these are the important uh, seasoning methods. Finally, what are the advantages and disadvantages of artificial seasoning? 
in case of uh, the advantages are definitely the less space is required okay less time easy to control parameters because all these are in your hand you are controlling drying uniform at all surface less chances of in cracks moisture can be lowered down to zero to five percent okay and the quality better than natural seasoning as a whole quality is better than the natural seasoning what are the disadvantages definitely the higher initial and the running cost right and the output quality is less stronger in terms of strength it is less stronger than the natural seasoning and but definitely it requires some skilled some skilled labors are required some skill is required because these are specialized operations okay so this is all about uh, seasoning in the next uh, class we are going to see the different kinds of carpentry uh, processes and the cutting tools uh, that we use and finally how we give the shape to the job okay thank you